Okay. You know that moment when you remember you haven't tested the embedded video. <laughs> Let's hope that works later on if we get to it. Uh, so, good afternoon. I'm Rona Sharp. I'm uh, Head of Technology Enhanced Learning at the University of Surrey. And when I arrived at the University of Surrey about 18 months ago, um, the first thing I was asked to do was to produce an opt-out lecture capture policy for the institution to replace the opt-in one side of A41 that we had. Uh, now, this wasn't discussed at my job interview. My job interview. We talked about much more interesting things that I was going to do. And actually, if they'd have done their research, they may have found me on YouTube a long time ago in a, a MOOC we ran at Oxford Brooks, talking about how much I disliked lecturing. I don't like lecturing. I don't really like lecture capture. So um, I'm in a dilemma. I don't want to go around and introduce myself to the academic departments and to these colleagues that I'm going to be working with, saying we need to do an opt-out lecture capture policy. Things that I had at my advantage, a really good team of imaginative people in technology enhanced learning, a real background and history of student partnerships that we could use and knowing about how to work student partnerships. We had Panopto already in all of the centrally bookable teaching rooms. We had good uptake already without having a, a requirement policy. We had lecturers who were innovative and engaged and doing some interesting things. So all of that in my favour. So I thought what I'd do is just talk you through uh, what, I, what we did in that first year or so, and then Lauren, who is one of our faculty-based digital learning coordinators, is going to talk about how it's going on the ground. But really I wanted to say something about policy and policy development. I started looking at what other people had done, and at the, at the time, Health, the Heads of E-Learning Forum, their annual survey for that year happened to be on lecture capture. So that was really timely for me. And one of the questions in that survey, which I imagine some of you might have contributed to, was about um, what were the drivers for lecture capture. And I looked at these and I thought, oh, God. I mean, what's missing from here? So the drivers, students, academics. academics. So um, academics are missing. The pedagogy is missing. We've heard talks today already about, um, you know, you get, a, you get the kit in the classroom, you get the policy, and then the staff development has to do all the pedagogy work. So how do you have a policy that promotes the pedagogy which you're trying to encourage and which empowers academics to do their, their good work as teachers? So I looked at what other people were doing. I looked in the literature. I haven't really got time to talk about that, but I would say Emily Nordman from the University of Glasgow, really interesting work. We talked a lot uh, about that, and we also used the work of Gemma Witten then at Wolverhampton, I think. But I looked at the NSS, and I read all of the open comments to our institution's NSS. Great induction, if you're new in an institution, to read all of the open comments in the NSS. And looked at these things and thought, well, actually, what do we want to, uh, to promote here? Students are using it as supplementary resources. We've heard about that a lot already today. And they're using it for revision. We've heard about that with deadlines. And those are the types of uses of Panopto that we want to encourage. Yes, they're using it to avoid clashes and timetabling and commuting and missed lectures, but we don't really want to encourage that. What we want to encourage is this supplementary resource. So here's the policy of consultation, committees, blogs, town hall meetings, all of those things working very collaboratively with the student union. The policy is student-centred. It's not about what academics will deliver. It's about what students are entitled to, what they should expect. It's focused on the module level, which is where the academics have power. Uh, it's focused on discipline-specific pedagogies at the departmental level. And it's focused on not just lecture capture, but captured content, which could be other things. I'm going to hand over to Lauren for the last couple of minutes to say, and how's that going in the faculties? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so hello, I'm Lauren. I am a faculty digital learning coordinator, um, and I've been working with academics at module level, as Rona mentioned. I think it's fantastic to work at that level because it means that academics can then um, make things that are relevant. Um, lots of the comments that I've had from staff when I show them examples might be it's easy for that school to do it um, but what about us depending on whether they're practical or theory based um, so I think at module level it really just gives them that freedom to try different things out 
Um, what we found is I definitely think staff are more engaged because we're focusing on captured content. It's not just lecture capture. So those that feel uncomfortable about recording whole lectures or worry about attendance and things like that have the alternative. I can then talk to them about, okay, but you know, what about captured content? What other engaging audio visual content can we create for your students? Um, they now are starting to think outside of the box, which is great. And they're thinking about the pedagogical impact rather than just recording a lecture. They're actually thinking about how do these extra supplements help? Um, and we've got staff now in, um, interested in doing podcasts. We've also had people recording interviews for guest lectures that maybe couldn't come on the day of the actual lecture. Um, we've also got lots of staff now really interested in peer-to-peer -peer learning, so getting students to create their captured content um, for other students, which is great. And we've also got lots of staff-student collaboration happening. Um, and one of the things we've got is a project called Ideas, which our student interns have created. And we have a short video to show you about what they project. Hi, I'm one of the other interns. You might be wondering, why am I in space? I thought it would be a more interesting way to begin explaining how videos can be a great way to learn and teach. Okay, we're back on Earth and in the classroom. Let's introduce the benefits. We can all agree that attending lectures and doing your own reading is beneficial. However, videos can dramatically increase your learning experience. Videos in the classroom are visually engaging, it sparks curiosity, and also enhances digital literacy. No matter what your role is at Surrey, video creation is for everyone. As a staff member, you could use them to prepare learning materials prior to class. As students, you can use videos to learn at your own pace which is super helpful when you're introduced to challenging concepts. There are many more benefits to using videos in teaching and learning. With ideas, students and staff can work collaboratively to share these benefits with other members of the University of Surrey community. And uh, we now have actually introduced some animation software for staff to start trialing, and we've got an academic that's interested in using that with his students as well. So it's kind of opened up a whole new uh, box of ideas, so we are really interested to see how that